Hello and welcome to the section of Calculus Extra Practice with Integration. Here we're going to start talking about the logarithm in terms of integrals. And there's really no way to prep you for what you're about to see other than just to show you. So uh, the bottom line is, is, is some of these integrals are going to end up being logarithms. And let me try to explain why that is. So first let's recall something that you already know. right? So what if you had uh, integral of x squared dx and I said integrate that. We've already told you that pretty much for any polynomial, you just say 1 over exponent plus 1 times x to the exponent plus 1 plus a constant. So that is the integral of this guy. And I told you that pretty much works for all polynomials. Well, the, the, the little uh, secret is I lied to you just a little bit. There's one little polynomial that doesn't quite work. What if you had the integral of 1 over x dx? And I just said integrate that. Well, your first response should be to rewrite this as x to the negative 1 because it helps in terms of the polynomials that we've had. So how do you actually integrate this? Well, uh, you treat it just like you would treat anything else. The coefficient in front is 1, so it's 1 over exponent plus 1, so negative 1 plus 1 becomes a 0, times x, and then the exponent plus 1 also becomes 0 plus a constant. Because you have negative 1, so when you're adding 1 to it, you're, you're going to get 0. So you look at this and say, this is my answer. But then you realize this is nonsense. Because first of all, x raised to the 0 power, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. right? Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. But then what I have here is 1 over 0. 1 over 0, when you think about limits and calculus, really kind of is infinity. You're taking 1 and you're dividing by nothing. So there's an infinite number of times that can happen. So this is a nonsense answer because we're integrating a real function, right, that's concrete on a graph, and what we're getting is this guy, which is like infinity, times 1. So it's kind of like we're getting infinity. Uh, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So when you get stuff like this, and this is the only case when it happens, when you, when you do the polynomial business and you actually just try to get the answer. If you get 1 over 0 in front, you've done something wrong, right? right? So uh, there is a proof that you could look at and go and figure out and learn about and all these things. But the bottom line is, I'm going to write the bottom line for you. This stuff doesn't work when you have 1 over x, or if you write it as, as this, it's the same thing. So what you really have is when you see integral of 1 over x dx anywhere in calculus, the answer to this integral is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus a constant. This is important. This is one of those things you'll see circled in your calculus books. Okay? There is a proof to go figure out why the integral of this would be the natural logarithm. There's a proof, but the proof doesn't really enrich you much, in my opinion. I mean, go read it in a book, great. But the bottom line is, if you see this, you're going to have to, to treat this. You're going to have to treat this as a logarithm. The answer is going to be a logarithm. So they can break it down and do the, all the theorems and prove and show with all the sums that it comes out to logarithm of x, natural logarithm of x. But the bottom line is, if you see the integral of 1 over x, it's always going to be natural log ln of x. Okay. Now let me show you. We have absolute value brackets around here. The reason we have absolute value brackets is because if you plot the natural log function like this, what does it look like? The natural log function starts way down here in negative infinity, and it goes up and crosses over and kind of bends over, eventually going to infinity that way. Okay, So what happens is, if I put positive numbers for x in here, I get positive numbers for natural log of x up here. If I put small values of x that are also positive but close to zero, 